Hello friends, I am Om and today we are gonna find out which ones are the best Linux testers for 2024 by the use of elimination method in which a distro needs to pass these 5 stages or I should say requirements and the ones which will survive till the end are gonna be the winner or I should say the best Linux distros. So let's get started but wait there's a disclaimer. This video is for those people who want to use Linux as their daily driver and the result will be based on that perspective. So without any further ado, let's get right into the video. So here are the most used Linux distros of 2023 and we are gonna filter them one by one as we go further from one stage to another stage. And let the elimination begin. Stage 1 Simplicity with Power If I have to select a Linux distro which I will use for my day to day task, then I need that to be simple, good looking, user friendly, and of course, giving me more than enough power to do all my daily tasks along with some system and administrative tasks at high level. So let's see which ones are capable of that, shall we? In my opinion, all of them are more than enough for simple tasks with power because they are Linux. So you're gonna get power and all of them have a powerful desktop environment which is good looking for example GNOME, KDE, XFCE, LMDE. All of them are great. So in this stage all of them pass this test. The next stage is stability and I must say this is the most crucial part because I don't want any bugs, glitches or crashes in the operating system while I'm doing day to day tasks and even if I am doing something crazy like video editing, gaming or something big and even at that time I don't want any glitches or bugs. So let's see which one are capable enough to provide me that. Linux Mint? Definitely the King Kong of Linux is more than enough to give me proper stability and it is also known as the most stable Linux distro ever. So yes Linux Mint is definitely qualified. And next Minjaro. And here's the problem. You see Manjaro is well like not properly based on Arch as it uses Pemac instead of Pac-Man. And even at that point most of the packages are like broken. There are a lot of glitches, bugs and crashes while using Manjaro. So definitely not. Going next, Ubuntu. Definitely qualified. It is made for that purpose isn't it? Fedora definitely qualified and even it is more stable than Ubuntu. And next, Solid OS. Definitely hell yeah, it is even more stable than Fedora. And then Pop OS, definitely yes. It is even based on Ubuntu's LTS release, so definitely yes. And next, Arch. And here's the problem. Arch was never a good choice when it comes to stability and there's a proper reason for that, you know that. All the packages are like cutting edge or bleeding edge. Those versions are not yet even in the stable or beta branch of other distributions. And they give me bugs, glitches here and there and installing drivers is really a mess. Unless you know the proper names of those drivers. But unlike Ubuntu, Fedora, Pop OS or other distributions, Arch is not that stable for daily purpose. And next, Debian. Definitely the most stable Linux distro. Well, it is a Linux base. But still all the packages in Debian repositories are way too stable and outdated. But still in this stage, Debian pass. Next, Elementary OS. Yes, Elementary is based on Ubuntu's LTS release and it uses Pantheon as its desktop environment. Great. And next, Garora Linux. Definitely yes, even better. Next, Solus. Yes, KDE Neon. Well, KDE Neon does provide you most of the cutting edge applications, but those applications are provided by KDE. All the other distributive packages are well based on Ubuntu's LTS release. So yes, definitely, it is more than qualified. Nubara, it is based on Fedora, but still it is properly optimized in Fedora. Nubara is qualified to pass this stage. And now stage 3, updates and latest packages. Well, you don't want to use outdated packages in your daily life, do you? And at the same time, they have to be stable. So let's see. Mint. Well, there was a time when all the packages in Mint's repositories were like outdated. But these days, the best repositories. And Linux Mint 21.3 Virginia is even great. So yes, Linux Mint definitely qualifies this.
here the thing comes they've been packages are not yet properly optimized so they try to keep all the latest but stable packages in their experimental branches like beta or they've been said but when i talk about its stable branch then the packages are not yet latest as like sorry and pop os or ubuntu so they've been better luck next time and next elementary and the same problem occurs here elementary is known for providing outdated packages most of the time for most of the packages and applications and that is why elementary better luck next time and do you know elementary os 8 is going to be released well i'll create a video about it so subscribe if you do not want to miss that one and next garora linux yes it is also qualified solus of course kd neon definitely yes nobara yes moving further stage 4 drivers like gpu drivers and cpu drivers and especially gaming because you know in daily life you might want to play games on it so the ability to play games perfectly not perfectly but but better than windows should be there so you need proper optimization of those drivers in order to play games without any interruptions of bugs and glitches so let's see linux went they have a proper utility tool to install proper drivers for your gpu Definitely yes. Ubuntu, yes, as same as Linux Mint. It also provides a utility tool to install GPU drivers. And then Zorin OS, well, all the proper drivers are already pre-installed in the ISO. And if something is missing, they provide you in the updates just like Ubuntu and Linux Mint. Pop OS, <laughs> they have a particular separate ISO for NVIDIA GPUs. Great, Garuna. Well, Garuna was great in terms of gaming, but these days I'm seeing a lot of glitches in those proper native Linux games. I'm not talking about the Proton games. I'm talking about the native games which are run without any container. And I know how, but Garuna is not yet properly optimized for gaming these days. Next, Solus, same as Garuna. Previously, it was great, but these days don't know how these distros are not yet properly optimized for it. while on the other hand solid noise and pop os are doing great next kd neon it is pretty okay in terms of gaming and then nobara <laughs> same as pop os it provides you special treatments when you try to game on it and the last stage in this list is community support well it is obvious when you face any glitch or bug you want to fix that so you google it and then you should get the solution and all the distros which are left right now are great when it comes to community support so the best linux distros to use in 2024 are linux mint sorin os pop os kd neon and nobara and in my opinion these all distros are more than enough to provide a satisfaction or i should say a satisfactory experience to the user and now you can choose any one of them as your winner according to your taste requirements and desire for example like linux mint it is great for people who want a desktop similar to windows while providing better performance while providing stability out of the box and let's say you want to use solid os and i must say solid os is really good looking the desktop of solid os is based on gnome but the solid flavor looks pretty beautiful i must say and the desktop is pretty refreshing like it gives you a vibe that you are productive today And let's say you want to use Pop OS because it gives you all the required features for gaming, for productivity work, for content creation, and it is based on Ubuntu's LTS release, so it is pretty stable. And let's say you want to play games, do heavy work like coding, development, and that stuff. Nobara is more than enough. But the question remains, which one of them is the greatest? And I'm thinking about an ultimate showdown battle between these five distros. in which we will compare all these distros according to well the categories like the best distro for gaming the best distro for content creation the best distro for coding and then we will know which ones are the best so don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss those videos and awesome news content is uploaded every day on this channel so subscribe and i will meet you in the next video till then i hope signing out